IET NCERT presents audiobook introductory macroeconomics page 77 module 5.2 foreign exchange rationale foreign exchange determines the exchange of currency between the countries it facilitates trade of goods and services between countries and enables one country to invest in another country key concepts foreign exchange flexible exchange rate fixed exchange rate managed floating exchange rate nominal and real exchange rate page 78 5.2.1 foreign exchange in usa a cup of coffee costs 1 In India, a cup of coffee costs rupees fifty. If an American buys coffee in India, how will she make the payment? At an international level, there is no single currency. To promote international trade between India and USA, governments of India and USA have to convince their citizens with two things: a, dollar can be converted into rupee and vice versa, and b. the price at which this conversion takes place is determined either by the market forces or by the respective governments and it is recognized by all foreign exchange rate also called forex rate is the price of one currency in terms of another it links the currencies of different countries and enables comparison of international costs and prices for example If we have to pay rupees fifty for one dollar, then the exchange rate is rupees fifty per dollar. To make it simple, let us consider that India and USA are the only countries in the world, and so there is only one exchange rate that needs to be determined. Five point two point two demand for foreign exchange. People demand foreign exchange because a they want to purchase goods and services. from other countries b they want to send gifts abroad c they want to purchase financial assets of a certain country a rise in price of foreign exchange will increase the cost in terms of rupees of purchasing a foreign good this reduces demand for imports and hence demand for foreign exchange also decreases other things remaining constant this is depicted in figure 5.3 page 79 figure 5.3 demand for foreign exchange here we have a graph with two axes x and y x axis represents demand of usd y axis represents price in rupees or dollar as we understand there is a downward sloping demand curve here denoted by the line dd from this we understand that as price decreases the demand of usd increases the y axis denotes price of foreign exchange in terms of rupees per dollar that is how many rupees will be paid in exchange for 1 us dollar the x axis measures the quantity of foreign currency demanded the demand curve is downward sloping 5.2.3 supply of foreign exchange foreign currency flows into the home country due to the following reasons a exports by a country lead to the purchase of its domestic goods and services by the foreigners b foreigners send gift or make transfers c the assets of a home country are bought by the foreigners a rise in price of foreign exchange will reduce the foreigner's cost in terms of usd while purchasing products from india other things remaining constant this increases india's exports and hence supply for foreign exchange also increases this is depicted in figure 5.4 where the y axis denotes price of foreign exchange in terms of rupees per dollar and the x axis measures the quantity of foreign currency supplied The supply curve is upward sloping. Page 80, figure 5.4, supply of foreign exchange. Here we have a graph with two axes, 
X and Y. X axis represents supply of USD. Y axis represents price in rupees or dollar. Here there is a line marked by SS. This line is the supply curve and it is upward sloping. From this we can infer that as price increases the supply of US dollars also increases. 5.2.4 determination of the exchange rate. Different countries have different methods of determining their currency's exchange rate. It can be determined through flexible exchange rate, fixed exchange rate or managed floating exchange rate. Flexible exchange rate. This exchange rate is determined by the market forces of demand and supply. It is also known as floating exchange rate. As depicted in figure 5.5, the exchange rate is determined where the demand curve intersects with the supply curve, that is, at point E on the y axis. Point Q on the x axis determines the quantity of US dollars that have been demanded and supplied on E exchange rate. In a completely flexible system, the central banks do not intervene in the foreign exchange market. Page 81, figure 5.5, determination of flexible exchange rate. Here we have a graph with two axes, X and Y. X axis represents demand and supply of US dollars. Y axis represents price in rupees or dollars. As we can infer from this that at the intersection of the supply curve and the demand curve, the price of dollars or the exchange rate is determined. At price OE, OQ amount of US dollars will be demanded and supplied. Suppose the demand for foreign goods and services increases, for example, due to increased international traveling by Indians. Then, as depicted in figure 5.6, the demand curve shifts upward and right to the original demand curve. The increase in demand for foreign goods and services result in an increase in the exchange rate. The initial exchange rate, E0, is equal to 50, which means that we need to exchange rupees 50 for $1. At the new equilibrium, the exchange rate becomes E1 is equal to 70, which means that we need to pay more rupees for a dollar now, that is rupees 70. It indicates that the value of rupees in terms of dollars has fallen and value of dollar in terms of rupees has risen. Increase in exchange rate implies that the price of foreign currency or dollar in terms of domestic currency or rupees has increased. This is called depreciation of domestic currency, in this case rupees, in terms of foreign currency, in this case dollars. Page 82 Figure 5.6 Effect of increase in demand for imports in foreign exchange market. Here we have a graph with two axes, X and Y. X axis represents demand and supply of USD. Y axis represents price in rupees or dollars. In this graph, the supply curve is upward sloping and is represented by the line SS. The demand curve is downward sloping and is represented by the line DD. The new demand curve is also downward sloping and is represented by the line D1 and D1. Initially, at the price 0 EO, the demand and supply of USD was 0 QO. But with the shift in demand curve, the price increased to 0 E1 and the demand and supply of USD also increased to 0 Q1. Similarly, in a flexible exchange rate regime, where the price of domestic currency, say rupees, in terms of foreign currency, say dollars, increases, it is called appreciation of the domestic currency, that is rupees, in terms of foreign currency, that is dollars. This means that the value of rupees relative to dollar has risen and we need to pay fewer rupees in exchange for one dollar. Figure 5.7 
summarizes the effects of exchange rate changes on imports and exports of a country. Figure 5.7 Effects of Exchange Rate on Imports and Exports We have before us two flowcharts. The flowchart on the left begins with the effect of depreciation, which is then branched off into two sub-branches. Domestic currency becomes cheaper for foreigners and foreign currency becomes expensive for Indians. When domestic currency is cheaper for foreigners, it leads to the sub-branch increase in exports. When foreign currency becomes expensive for Indians, it leads to the sub-branch decrease in imports. On the right-hand side, the flowchart looks at the effect of appreciation. The two sub-branches are domestic currency becomes expensive for foreigners and foreign currency becomes cheaper for Indians. When domestic currency becomes expensive for foreigners, it leads to the sub-branch decrease in exports. When foreign currency becomes cheaper for Indians, it leads to the sub-branch increase in imports. Fixed Exchange Rate In this exchange rate system, the government fixes the exchange rate at a particular level. In figure 5.8, the market-determined exchange rate is E. However, let us suppose that for some reason, the Indian government wants to encourage exports for which it needs to make rupee cheaper for foreigners. Page 83 It would do so by fixing a higher exchange rate, say rupees 70 per dollar from the current exchange rate of rupees 50 per dollar. Thus, the new exchange rate set by the government is E1, where E1 is greater than E. At this exchange rate, the supply of dollars exceeds the demand for dollars. The RBI intervenes to sell the dollars for rupees in the foreign exchange market in order to absorb this excess supply which has been marked as AB in the figure. Thus, through intervention, the government can maintain any exchange rate in the economy. In a fixed exchange rate system, when some government action increases the exchange rate, thereby making domestic currency cheaper, is called devaluation. On the other hand, a revaluation is set to occur when the government decreases the exchange rate, thereby making domestic currency costlier in a fixed exchange rate system. Figure 5.8 Fixed Exchange Rate in a Foreign Exchange Market Here we have a graph with two axes, X and Y. X axis represents demand and supply of US dollars, Y axis represents price in rupees or dollars. There is an upward sloping supply curve here represented by the line SS. There is also a downward sloping demand curve here represented by the line DD. They both intersect at a point E. This is the point of equilibrium. At this point, the price is 0 E0 and the demand and supply of US dollars is 0 QO. When the government decides to increase the exchange rate to rupees 70, in that case the price rises and becomes 0 E1 and the demand and supply of US dollars also increases to the point 0 Q1. This gap has been represented by the line AB and is there because of the government intervention. Managed Floating Exchange Rate It is a combination of the flexible exchange rate system, the float part, and the fixed exchange rate system, the managed part. Under this system, central banks intervene to buy and sell foreign currencies in an attempt to moderate exchange rate movements whenever they feel that such actions are needed. Page 84 5.2.5 Nominal and Real Exchange Rate The exchange rate we have been discussing so far is the nominal exchange rate. It is called nominal because it measures just the numerical exchange value of a currency. That is, how many units of a foreign currency, that is in this case dollars, one will get in exchange for its domestic currency, in this case rupees. Hence, nominal exchange rate defines the price of one currency for which a certain number of units of another currency could be exchanged. 
However, a more important question is how much does a bundle of goods and services cost in the USA as compared to India? Real exchange rate measures the rate at which domestic goods and services are exchanged for foreign goods rather than the rate at which currencies are traded. This represents relative price of goods and services in two countries. Unlike the nominal exchange rate that measures the numerical exchange value of a currency, real exchange rate measures the purchasing power of the currency. The real exchange rate is the quantity of Indian goods which have to be given up to get one unit of US good. Real exchange rate is given by Real exchange rate is equal to small e pf divided by p where pf is the price of the commodity in a foreign country. f stands for foreign country. For example, price of a book in US dollars and rupees p is the price of that commodity in the domestic country. For example, price of that book in India. e is the nominal exchange rate. Thus, the real exchange rate equals the ratio of foreign prices to domestic prices of a commodity measured in the same currency. The nominal exchange rate for India with respect to USA has been rupees 60 per dollar. Suppose a book costs 2 dollars in USA and rupees 200 in India. The real exchange rate can be calculated as 60 multiplied by 2 divided by 200, which is equal to 0 0.6. Test your understanding. 1. State whether the following will constitute demand or supply of foreign exchange. Point 1. Indian going to USA for medical treatment. Point 2. Import of goods from China. Point 3. A person from London buys Rajasthani bangles from India. Point 4. Indian student going for higher studies to Australia. Point 5. Foreign tourists visiting Taj Mahal. 2. Suppose the rupee appreciates against the US dollar. Which of the following two situations becomes favourable? Point 1. Your trip from India to USA. Point 2. A trip of your uncle from USA to India. You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India